Okay, first, let me explain how this video is coming to be. Okay, so I've been playing, if you, if you haven't noticed, I've been playing um, a lot less League and a lot more TFT, you know, partially because, you know, I'm having like health issues and uh, shit like, okay, so shit's happening. Okay, so um, I've been playing like more TFT on my main account and um, people have been popping up in my TFT games who recognize me and they're like, yo, Saber, love the content. Yo, Saber, love the educational videos. And I was thinking to myself tonight, I was like, yo, I haven't made jack shit in forever. Essentially in forever. Like, I mean, when was the last time you guys saw a, a constructed video? This won't even be a constructed video. This, I just hope this video will be helpful for you guys. I'm just gonna record something and it's gonna go, okay? So I was like, you know what? I should try and do something, but I don't have too many um too many structured clips on hand so i will just throw a replay at you guys okay and the title of this video will be something like you know how challenger adc thinks in season 11 but really um there's only like a few challengers in this game right so i mean like okay so let's let's open up the game here um and there were only like like six out of ten were challenger okay so like kind of low elo right um, and we're going to scout. Oh, well, shit, we saw spoilers. You see the score. Uh, we're going to we're going to watch the game, and at the critical moments of the game, I'm going to explain what I was thinking, and uh, if something bad happened, what we should do to fix it. Right. Um, so hopefully, uh, if you guys are watching this video, if you watch it in full, you will be able to learn at least one thing. You'll be at least one main takeaway. I'm sure we will see a lot of um, patterns that show up in this game that uh, might be parallel in your games, okay? And you will see how I play these situations out. So, um, oh yeah, and for the people who are like, Keg W not Challenger, uh, we just stopped playing the K games because um, waiting two hours a game every day is really annoying. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's start the video. The main focus in this video will be how I respond to critical moments in the game and what are what even are these moments? A lot of you guys probably don't even know what these moments look like, right? For example, the enemy mid laner has pushed mid, so that means maybe you should watch out for a four-man dive, right? Because your jungle's topside. You guys might not even know that's happening. So I will be able to describe to you guys what I'm thinking and what I'm doing, okay? In full, okay? There should be full explanation. If I miss anything, you have any questions that I didn't answer or that didn't come up, you should... Ask in the comment section. I will probably um, actually read this comment section unless you guys are animals. <laughs> um, but I will probably read and answer most of these. So um, we can talk a little bit about this trade. Okay, let's try and not get too bogged down into the details. But if you see me auto attack trade on Kaylin, it's because I have headshot up. If we back it up here, my counter is at three. So in my head, as a Kaylin main, I'm thinking we need to count to six, guys. You know, as a Jin main, you count to four. On Kaylin, we count to six, okay? We go one, two, three, four, five. Five means you have, you know, five bullets left on your passive. Next, last hit will give you a headshot. Use it immediately. Right? So three, four, five. This is six into headshot. Ready? So six. So I use it on him and then a headshot. And that's it. We're done. Right? And that's how, as a Kaelin, as Kaelin, Kaelin specifically, we will uh, attempt to find short beneficial traits. Okay? Just pure 1v1 in the enemy ADC's face. Okay? And you can see me doing again four. You know, you see the counter at five. And then this is going to be six. Auto cancel Q is also very good. Um, I went for six here and I got hit by the hook, right? So, that is... Okay, so... Yeah, all this is happening. We lost Flash and Keo. It's really unfortunate. It's really giga in by me. Uh, if you want to talk about this real quick. It's not... If When you get hit by this, okay? It's not... Oh, shit. Don't go for the headshot. Right? Oh, wow. You. I mean, it sometimes worked. It sometimes didn't. You know, the first time you hit the Jinx, it was all good. Second time you got hit by Blitz, maybe we should just don't do it. No, 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 no. You need to make it better. Okay, and what do I mean by better? What do I mean by better? Um, a lot of you guys are just like, yeah, just don't do it next time, right? Oh shit, we just don't do the Baron, right? Because they're just gonna steal. No, no, no. You need to learn how to start the Baron and then zone the fuck out of their jungler. Find a way. Find a way, right? And then if there is no way, then you can say don't do Baron. So in this case, I'm gonna get my headshot. And I want to find a way, but we need to take into account that Blitz is gonna hook us, right? So a habit you could build here is, hey, every time we're looking for like our headshot attack immediately think about their play right because obviously there's a disconnect between um what i wanted and what actually happened right so it's not don't go for you know a headshot stack on five last 10 minute into six headshot it's 
every time you do that, look at the support. See if they have a counter, right? Maybe even look at the ADC. Maybe their ADC trade is stronger, like a Draven Nami, for example. It's just off the top of my head, right? So just to keep you, just to give you guys uh, perspective on how to improve in League of Legends, it's a lot of it comes down to the thing you're already doing is not necessarily a bad thing. You just want to add a new habit on top of that to make it better, okay? So yeah, I ended up getting hooked here. Um, definitely should not be getting hooked, but uh, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. We had to immediately cash out our flash and heal, right? Um, there's no way you're getting out without using flash and heal, so sometimes it'd be like that. We got the level 2. Um, and then, uh, yeah, not much is really going on here except for the fact that we got a force base probably and we have no flash. Oh, no. <clears throat> it's kind of a disaster. Yeah, laning is definitely a disaster. Their jungle should just instantly be coming bot. Yeah, you can see here we're just like, yeah, we're getting flash on or something. Um, Thirst gets hooked, so of course we're aiming the ADC, but because we have no HP, we're just fucking dead. Um, pretty unfortunate sequence of events, right? Okay. <laughs> Again, we went for the headshot. Kill me. Holy fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, he did kill you. He did kill you, buddy. His skin doesn't do extra damage. Um, but anyways, we went for the headshot again, and yeah, we literally died to fist because we were at 200 HP. So super unfortunate. Um, in this case, uh, what's happening here is that they need to shove in the wave. Our jungle notices this and is like, holy shit, Jinx is one HP. Maybe we can stop them. Um, so I don't really have any decisions here, but we can explain what everyone else is thinking, okay? Diana sees this and he's like, I gotta cover my bot lane, so they don't die to gank. Unfortunately, the Diana meets our Lee Sin in the jungle. Oh, maybe we should just like mute this shit, bro. Um, so yeah, this is definitely gonna be, uh, not bad. I think Lee Sin will, in fact, uh, kill the Jinx here with Flash. Yep, there it is. Pretty sure Jinx is just dead, right? Yeah, Jinx is trolling. Nice. And we get the Q off, and then, uh, yeah, oh, this is fine. He's got the kill. He's fine. Okay, so, it's somewhat saved by the fact that they, our least, our jungler basically gapped them, essentially, okay? And now, we have this wave here, where we have a choice. Do we want to deny the wave, and then push the next wave, and start building up a slow push? There are a ton of minions here. Or, do we need to base? We need, we need a base. So, we need to figure out a way to base. So you have two options. Um, really, we just try and kill all the minions and take as many as possible and go home. We can thin it out and let it push towards us and go home. Uh, but you will have to calculate exactly how many minions you need for that to work. Oh, we're actually going to try and blow out the uh, cannon wave too, I guess. Because we really, we definitely cannot base yet. We just need to, uh, we need jungle assistance. <laughs> we need jungle assistance here, I think. So here we know they have no flash, right? It's super simple to just flay into an all-in. I mean, this is, the blitz is trolling, right? I don't I mean, I guess he doesn't have a map, but um, maybe he just, you know, went for a psycho play or something. But yeah, uh, Blitz has no flash, and they don't know where our jungler is, so of course he's going to die. And um, it's important to note that um, a lot of you guys would be like, oh, okay, what about counter gank? What about TP? How do you stop counter ganking TP, right? That kind of stuff. Uh, if you look at the map here, right, we can see that, you know, Diana is the jungler. The value of a Diana counter, jung counter gank is you know, garbage, right? She can't even do anything level 4, level 3. Mid is obviously mid. And top is pushed, so he could TP, but he hasn't fully pushed in, right? His wave is not yet completely fixed. He needs to get into the tower. So he's not going to just, t just you know, sack his wave and just TP, right? Um, so yeah, that's how we know off the top of our heads, this gank is already won, right? There's nothing the enemy team could do to counter this, right? The first thing you think is counter jungle. Then is garbage. There is no counter jungle, right? Really simple stuff, okay? But usually the order of operations is going to be you look at jungle, you look at mid, and you look at top, TP, right? Jungle, gank, and then mid realm and top TP, okay? So uh, if you want to come up with a, uh, 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 like, I guess, a, a ganking checklist or like a, a ganking habit, map awareness habit, that would be a good one to add, okay? If you guys didn't know, when you get to lane and you have a cannon away, we just, when you went in doubt, just default slow push, right? So in this case, you know, it's pretty clear we need to slow push this and then crash the wave into tower, right? We even even might deny, deny the cannon. Um, our jungle is topside. We have no flash, yada, yada, yada. You, you guys you guys understand the drill, right? When in doubt, we slow push, okay? We build up a wave, okay? Don't just randomly blow out the wave and start pushing with auto attacks if you don't know what you want to do with the wave management yet. You cannot unpush, okay? You can keep pushing after you realize you need to push, but you cannot unpush, okay? Oh, Dan is... Uh, 
on the pink one now. So we're now collapsing on the uh, the jungler. We're attempting to collapse on the jungler. She will probably get away. I think Lee Sin could have gone on that. I mean, not Lee Sin, Cassie didn't. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe he thought uh, Viego is there, but uh, yeah, he was not. So obviously, we see Diana was uh, pushed out from the river, so we started the dragon. Their bot lane is on vision. They have to fix the wave, right? They have no idea what's going on, so we can just do dragon, no problem. Here, we're trying to pull the wave, right? They are the ones who want to crash because they know our jungle is bot side. <clears throat> so we want to deny them minions, right? If we pull the wave, they're going to lose minions, and they feel like they cannot do anything because if they walk up, they will die to a league, right? That's the kind of the idea behind a, a good freeze. You can threaten them with something if you pull the wave. And here we're threatening him with a gank. So if he walks up to the wave, we're going to kill him, right? Which is exactly what happens, right? So the thing to keep in mind with freezes is that you need to be able to punish when they, break, when they try to break the freeze. If you're pulling the wave and their jungle fiddlesticks is bot, you're just asking to get dove, right? Because fiddlesticks is literally going to walk around or just ulti from the closest bush. Right? You don't really have a threat when they try and break the freeze. They will literally just kill you, right? So if their jungle is topside and your jungle is bot, then you can threaten a freeze because your jungle will literally fuck them up if they try and break it. Okay, so that's a a, a bit a good distinction I think a lot of you guys um might not really understand when you try and pull the wave, right? It's very much based off of can you can you threaten something when they try and break the freeze? Pretty much can you can you kill them, you know? Um, so their Dinah is here, you know, this is, I mean, chaining events, but their Dinah went top, right? So the instant we notice that we have one timer to make a play bot, and that's exactly what we do, okay? And we're going to talk about this fight. It's a fucking disaster, okay? We're going to talk about why that is, but we're going to talk, we're going to talk about it from an ADC's perspective, okay? It's a giga, giga disaster. So as an ADC, your job is to do damage. So when you think about this dive, you need to think about how do I land my damage probably on the closest guy and with Caitlyn it's going to be Q and ulti so if you use your damage pattern and you haven't accomplished what you needed your play is over you're done you gotta stop you gotta go home you gotta no more no more you have no more damage right so if we watch this let's watch how I use my Q and ulti so Q ulti went on to Jinx and Q went on to Blitzcrank you're done that's it you have no more damage. It's over. So if you try and do more, right, you will more than likely, more likely than not, just be inting. Okay? So this applies to any champion ADC, ADC in the game. So let's say we're playing Kai'Sa, and you iso queued and proc passive with W on Blitzcrank. Okay? You have no more damage. You're done. Okay? Let's say we're playing Varus. Okay? You, you know, three auto attacks into E, and then two auto attacks into Q. You're done. Right? You have no more damage. Okay? So when you go for these kind of dives okay and like or, or team fights if you, if you feel pressured you're like oh sh dude my team is going and i have to i have to do something your ability to do something is based off of your damage pattern if you do not have your pattern you can't do something even if you want to okay so in this case we literally don't got shit chief we ain't i ain't got shit okay so we're just gonna die we're just gonna end it okay so um you can like blame several people here you know anyone who i guess all three of us in that dive but um yeah i don't think uh <laughs> brendan is very happy with our jungler <laughs> it's okay it's okay okay let's not worry about that okay so let's fast forward here okay um so this landing phase has been quite a disaster so you guys must be wondering okay how do you go you know this disaster landing phase to 11 and 3 right and, and that's kind of where probably the meat of the video will be okay so here we see Blitzcrank mid, we see Diana top, we can push, and we, we should push this in, and, and Blitzcrank will be back bot, so there's no real dive here, right? That's kind of how we think the game in terms of timers, right? How long do you have to make a play before their team is able to move, essentially, right? You saw me go for a nice headshot there on Kaylin, you know? Never forget to count to six, right? So if you're wondering why we don't just dive him, it's because... The Blitzcrank is on the way back. So, I mean, let's point this out. Because a lot of you low elo players will be like, yo, you know, Blitz is mid. We should do something. It's a common misconception, okay? If, this is right here. You see him mid, you have to do something right now. You have a timer to do something right now. Right? Not in 30 seconds. Right now. Because Blitz is mid right now. So here, can we do something right now? We can push a wave. So, by the time you're done 
pushing the wave. That's your timer. You use your timer to push the wave. Blitz will have come back bot. Okay, think about that. Okay, so when you see them, when you see them mid, when you see their support roaming mid, you have a timer to do one thing right now. One timer right now. Okay, otherwise, the enemy support's on the way back. You don't have two timers. Two timers is pushing the wave and then diving. No. Right, you don't have enough time. Blitz will be back by then. Okay, so if you are confused on the definition of timer, a timer in this case, we'll, we'll describe timer as um, you have time to you have a turn. Okay, if you if if you've heard league described as turn based by pros or analysts or whatever, this is what they mean. You have the league is taken in turns. Blitzcrank used his turn to go mid. We will use our turn to do something right now, which is push bot. Blitzcrank uses his next turn to come bot. We will use our next turn to not dive. We're just chill. We're just chilling, right? So yeah, I think if there's anything you want to take away from this video, that's probably the most important thing if you didn't already know about timers, okay? So we're going to watch this fight real quick. Um, it's kind of a disaster. But we can discuss this. Um, so let's back it up here. So there's an unfortunate... Um, unfortunate uh <laughs> combo here so we didn't we didn't quite get the trap off the uh the uh, blitz crank right we didn't trap combo correctly because of uh some uh the close close angle is a little bit hard to decipher what was happening here right so yeah it's doomed if we dump our damage into aftershock you can't play the game right so this is an example of something is going wrong you have missed your damage somehow. We dumped EQ combo into Blitzcrank Aftershock. You need to stop. You need to stop. You can't just fucking int into killing Blitzcrank. I think a lot of you guys would be tempted to just keep going or whatever. Or or, or turn turn around and hit Jinx, right? A lot a lot of you guys do that. Don't don't even lie. I know who you are. You I know you guys, okay? You know who you are. You just turn around and auto attack Jinx while you're running away. No, you literally don't have anything left in the tank. You need to stop. Right? You you gotta cut your losses. Reset, wait for your abilities, and then you can come back and fight, okay? That's a, a very important. So that was like that tower dive, except I played it a little bit better, right? Not really a lot better, but at least we didn't die, right? In this case, um, we wanted to deter them from diving us, so we ulted the Blitzcrank, the guy who would tank the tower. And then um, we are just clearing the whip, right? Just making sure that they cannot uh, dive us. So even though our support died, it is actually not even that bad, right? We didn't lose any income. We didn't lose any XP. Sure, they may have gotten an extra kill, but it's not the end of the world, so to speak, right? It really is the end of the world when, you know, you get you lose income and XP and they get a kill, okay? That's bog gap. That's FFable, probably, right? So we watched the thing in full, and basically what happened was um, Topside was a disaster, and Blitz and Jigs are coming back to lane, and we didn't reset, right? And Lee Sin is looking for a 2v2 play. On their uh, their Jinx and Blitzcrank, but the only the only issue is that their top laner. We look at mid and we look at top, right? And we see that uh, mid has it can move, right? And top can TP. We don't have we don't see where Kennen is. So when you go for this play, it's not that you can't go for it. It's that when you see the TP coming, and when you see mid sprinting bot, we run. We're here to bait TPs. We're not necessarily here to just kill everyone, right? No. We're here to bait a response and run, okay? So usually as a default, when you see TP, the default answer is to run. Because you've already won. If they have committed TP and you successfully disengage, they have wasted their TP, right? You're not going to be like, yo, get them to the DP, and then we kill the guy TPing and everyone, okay? That doesn't really... Happen often. Why that you know the guy TPing wouldn't TP in the first place if he thought his whole team was gonna die, right? So usually when you see TP as an ADC, especially in the early game, we run immediately. You don't have shit. All you're gonna do is just feed the solo laner, and that is a big no-no. Okay. So in this case, we see this happening, and you guys are like, okay, you know maybe you can like you know flash and like Q Q Jinx and like help Lee and Killer. No, that's not your job. Your job is to stay alive when they are committing TP to this bot play, and to not die to mid dive if it's happening, right? So here. You see me staying as much as long as I dare, uh, and then when Cannon instant flash ulties, we flash as well, right? And you can see that you know, did we do our job in surviving the TP? We did, right? That was basically our job. That was pretty much the best outcome we could hope for, right? The only other outcome is to die with Lee in there. That that that's it. <laughs> that's it, right? So yeah, obviously that's not very good. 
So I think if there is another really easy habit for you guys to um, learn here, it's when you see TP, we, we default run. We're out of here. We should expect TP. And then when we see it, we're out of here. We're just there to bait it, right? But if you don't expect it, then you should instinctively run. So here we see something interesting. Jinx is already mid. And Viego is top. So their millionaire is top. Their ADC is mid. Dyn is shown mid. Which means it has to be cannon bot. Right? It has to be cannon bot. And it's highly unlikely their support is with cannon. So if we take a look at the map state, there's a reason why everyone is ping back pinging top side. Right, like, guys, their ADC is mid. Their mid is top. Their jungle is top. Their support is like 90% of 90% top side. And our support is 100% bot side. Right? Which means no matter what do not die 3v4 top side no matter what okay is giga omega grief to lose 4v5 top side by you know we, we just everyone back everyone stop okay and while they're running and we when we see blitzcrank our bot side will dive 2v1 okay so the plan here if i remember correctly i played this game like i played this game like 10 13 days ago we will play the dive cannon right and you guys might be asking, okay, how do you play to dive cannon? Well, a good start is to trade. Trade HP, you trade abilities, right? You don't want to, like, use our abilities and get zero, you know, do zero damage. You, you want to hit everything. And tra just trade as much as possible, and they will naturally die because they have n less resources, right? So if you watch this, pretty much the instant we see Blitzcrank, it is open season on this cannon, right? So you can see all these Kaelin tricks. You're going to see me stack up headshot and trying to headshot cannon, right? Um... All, 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 all that good stuff is about to happen, okay? And we know they have no TP because Diana Viego, right? It's the jungler's top side, the mid laner's top, there's no TP, right? So we have one timer to do something here. The instant we see Blitz, we saw Blitz, okay? We can look. And it is important to note that they have not shown top in a long time. They could have base and are on the way bot to counter, to counter our dive, right? But I think it's important to note that in solo queue, this does not really happen very often, right? Unless it's like a Scion ulti or like a TP or uh, anything like a global, like a TF ulti. Viego is not going to abandon his lane topside and just to come bot in hopes that we dive, right? That's not a very consistent play, so to speak, right? So that's how we know we can probably go for this, right? Uh, unfortunately, mid died for some reason. But um, here you can see that uh, Kennen is kind of being a psycho here. Um, I actually don't really know what he's doing, but we saw him use everything on the Thresh, right? So that's how we know we can kill him. <laughs> While that was happening, I guess our mid, our mid and jungle died. I don't know what is happening there. That was that's <laughs> that is interesting, eh? That's interesting, lads. Not not really your problem, okay? Don't worry about that, guys. So here, of course, we go mid, right? Ours ours Cassidy and wants to sell in for sure. So let's use this time to talk about timers again. Okay, so remember our discussion about timers with Blitzcrank shown mid. We had one timer to do something before Blitzcrank is coming back. Okay, so use this in the mid game. We look at the map and we see Viego has pushed top. Okay, we have one timer to do something before Viego is on the way. He's gonna be on the way, right? So if we watch this, right, Viego has disappeared from top. That means he could be on the way. Right now, like you can literally be on the way mid. So this is the interesting part. One of the one of the critical moments of the game is right here. Okay, so that their, their Diana hasn't shown yet, and Kennen has shown bot, and Viego is moving from top, right? So when we go for this play, it's pretty much guaranteed to be an int, right? How many times have you guys seen this where Diana, you know, rounds around, rounds the corner, and Viego comes from here, right? So usually, uh, I think this would be an example, an example of either a desperation play, right? Or it's just a fat int, okay? So if it's a desperation play, you just play the best you can and, you know, try and kill them and stuff. If it's an int, you should just lay your support down here, right? So I think I actually played this incorrectly. I think we should have actually let Brendan die here. But um, I felt like I couldn't let my friend die. So we just we just fought it. And uh, thankfully, Viego was not on the way. And Dino is not on the way. So a this psycho play turned very good for us somehow, which is... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of funny. It's not supposed to turn out good for us. I think it can be said that we can start the fight and attempt to run when Diana shows up or Viego shows up from top side. But um, you should know that you should know the risks. Like what can happen? Diana and Viego 
can could be on the way okay and how you are spawned pro appropriately so yeah of course we see diana here right we're like okay where's diana been this whole time she's gonna cover mid right she didn't go top she didn't go bot she has to be covering mid so we'll use our timer that we got to push mid to do jungle camps right because i did not want to go home yet for whatever reason we wanted to maximize our income and this is where uh most of you guys if not all of you guys who know that you should be farming in the mid game we should farm mid wave we should do something after we get the mid wave this is where most of you guys make a mistake. You go home. A lot of you guys just base here. Or you go top. Or you go, go ward, rift herald, or, or something strange, okay? Once you get mid, right, the mid wave, and you use that timer to go do something, which is go ward, or go get a camp, which is what I did, you gotta use, you gotta go back and get another timer. You gotta go fix the wave again. Otherwise, you're just gonna lose six minions if you base, right? So here, the, the, the classic pattern is, you know, clear mid, Go do something, come back clear mid, okay? It's not clear mid, go do something base, okay? Think about it. We clear mid, we have one timer to do something. We use that timer to, like, do chickens, okay? And then we use a timer to base. We're down minus one timer all of a sudden. We have negative one turn somehow. That's the that's the enemy bot pushing mid and you losing six minutes, six minutes to tower. That's minus one turn, okay? So we need to get that turn right now by clearing all the minions, and now we have a timer to do something, which is... Go home, okay? So if you're wondering how to maximize income in the mid game, another good takeaway would be we need to clear the wave to obtain a timer, use that timer to do something that something could be basing, and then we need to go get a timer again once we've done that something, which is why, you know, we come out of base and we go clear mid, right? <clears throat> Here, Lee Sin's looking for a play because Dan is show top, right? Obviously, we can't really do anything, but he can help us. His presence will help us clear the wave, hopefully. Wow. Wow. Blitzcrank was a full, uh, he's a psycho there. What, what was he doing? I have no idea what he was doing. But I guess he was confident because his, uh, Kenan had, a, Kenan was coming from bot. Kenan had pushed in, cast it in, and was moving from bot. So he tried to go for a flash player or something. Was, some psycho shit. Okay. We had, we had Lantern. That was never going to work. Okay. Some crazy psycho shit. Maybe it's trying to like <laughs> flash fist or flash ulti hook. Uh, some crazy shit. Okay. Don't worry about it. I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, killing specific stuff. We are saving 1100 gold by taking inspiration boots okay if we spend zero money on boots that's 1100 gold that would have gone to berserker's greaves okay instead that's zero so from the start of the game well i guess at uh 10 minutes or whenever your boots boots come in and they buy their boots you're 1100 gold up on the adc in terms of carry items okay so uh let's take a look at this uh this 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 uh map stay here because i think mid game study is probably going to be where the um most uh the the stuff you guys probably didn't know is going to come into play most here okay um so let's take a look at the map here and let's let's talk about you know timers and who from where okay so if we look at the map a lot of players will be like oh my god it's just dark i'm just scared I just don't know where anyone is. They're going to gank me. I I'm just scared, okay? We have to be more specific than I'm just scared, okay? Wh why is that? Because maybe, you know, when Lisa was ganking bot and you thought it was a counter gank, no, it's Diana Jungle. It's garbage, right? That's not a real counter gank, right? You don't have to be scared. So, in this case, the way... the Well, in, in, the, landing, in the landing phase case, the way we identified if we should be afraid of counter gank was who was the counter ganker? Diana. What are they going to do? Nothing. Where is she coming from? Her jungle, right? Who from where? Diana from jungle. How are they going to do it? Can't do it. So, garbage, okay? So, in this case, right, we'll back it up a little bit. I want to do all who from where real quick, okay? So, we're, so uh, back here, when we're in base, we should be looking at the map, okay? We see we see a lot of key info. We actually know where everyone on the in the game is, okay? One, Viego's from top, okay? The bot lane's mid, okay? You don't need to keep track of the bot lane. They're always mid. Their jungle was on the Herald, which means cannon must be bot, because every... Solo laner in ADC needs their own lane of farm. Otherwise, you're literally losing the scaling war. You're losing the cold war where you just have no money. Okay. The only uh, certain champions can abandon waves in order to make plays like Malphite and Ord and Scion, yada, yada, yada. But it's a cannon. Okay. He's not going to abandon his wave to make a play unless he's a flash proto belt one shot mid play. Okay. So um, we know where everyone is. So if you fast forward a bit back to where we were, we'll say Viego's from top if he didn't base. Kennen is from bot, and Dan is from the jungle. Can you push the mid wave? Because Viego is going to fist, right? Kennen is going to proto belt with flash, and Diana is going to, you know, QE and then ER, okay? Can you push the mid wave? The answer is no, 
right? Unless you want to calculate that we can gale force grab the lantern, we would elect to not push the mid wave, right? This is how you can figure out if you should be scared or not. And here you can see me putting traps down to see if I can play around some kind of Diana flash cycle move, right? Um, that's kind of how you can calculate if you can get the mid wave or not. Are they forcing on you mid or not? That's how you can find out. Right here, we're like, okay, where the hell is this cannon? We're just trying to find out where this cannon is. And by process, you know, by using sweeper and using traps, we can find out where everyone is. Okay, we will watch this fight in full. It will be very important. We'll discuss after we see the full fight, okay? Okay, let's back it up. So there are um, a few things to talk about here, okay? So first is dragon spawning. So of course we need to fight for the dragon. We're gonna fight for the vision, right? Uh, there's, always, there's always a concern of, you know, the mid wave, right? And how do we fight for the vision, okay? So in this case, there is no mid wave to get yet, although it is coming in. We should quickly try and grab space here maybe put some words down, fight for vision. And if nothing happens, we will go to get a timer by clearing the mid wave, okay? So we're gonna watch this. We're gonna try the end of the bush and I'm gonna go into the bush and Dan is like, holy shit, I want this guy. The instant he steps on it, we're gonna kill his ass, right? But that's what you think, okay? That's what most people think. When he steps on it, we're gonna kill his ass. That's not what you should try and do, right? Because you cannot just full to zero, dude, just like randomly, right? We're not at three items. We don't have infinity edge. How do you full to zero the Diana? She's going to be able to get something off, okay? So the really big takeaway here is you should hit these guys, but you don't full commit into killing them. Your goal is not to kill them. Your goal is to win the fight. There's a big difference. You can't be like, killing them wins the fight. So I Thanos snap them out of existence. That's not how it works, right? You need to win the fight somehow, right? The, the killing them is the end is like just like a natural result of you guys playing good. Not because you guys want to force it, you're gonna kill his ass. That's not how it works, right? So in this case, when we're when we're fighting this Diana, when we go to auto attack, if we if you'll notice, remember our discussion earlier on structured damage, right? When if you have no structured damage between and Kaylin is uh, it's Q and like net right um, at this stage in the game we like Q and net right I would say uh, and headshot with a headshot counter if you have no structured damage we said you can't fight right um, we'll add an, a, an amendment to that if you have no structured damage you cannot expect to do damage it sounds obvious I know right but the difference between me and you guys is intent I'm not walking up to half health Diana with the intent to kill. Because I literally have no more damage left. I'm marking up with the intent to bait her ulti. Because she has damage left, right? So this is one of the one of the mechanics, you know, counterplay mechanics. You know, guys, you guys all, all you guys know, like, okay, we can like flash hook, we can flash my foul ulti, you know, we can gale force away from like a, a various ulti. Okay, so now the, the issue you guys have is timing. When are you supposed to do this thing? Okay, and it's when you walk into range of their ability, you should be ready to do this thing, okay? So the real the real takeaway in this fight is not that we got the trap off when doing damage, but rather we have no structured damage left. So we're just here to bait his abilities. So therefore, we don't we don't just right click him and then watch what happens. You know, it's not right click and then like try and react after. It's I know without a doubt I will put money that he is gonna flash ulti or something. He is gonna do something on my face. So I will prepare flash or gale force. Okay, and you watch this, my mouse is already up here by the time Diana is moving, okay? My mouse is already pre-placed to Gale Force. Pre-placed. It's not, holy shit, she's, my mouse is not here, and then I realize she's in it, and then I just try and flick it up as fast as I can. No, I'm just, it's already here, I just press 2, and that's it, right? So if you want to have cleaner mechanics, you need to prepare it ahead of time. Okay, you need to prepare your counterplay ahead of time. Okay, this is also really important for you guys to uh, learn here. To to maximize your income in the mid game, you need to use your time wisely. It's a lot of our mid game ideas are coming back to tempo. So if you're like a masters or GM player and you're watching this, this is probably gonna help you the most. I, I know I've I've repeated myself a lot, but you know why do I not need to help my team do dragon? Because we already killed Diana. They're not gonna contest anymore. They're done. Right. So. Instead of using our time right now to go help the dragon, 
We could, cause we could go mid and get the dragon. I don't have to do anything to get the dragon, so we can just go mid right now. So that's exactly what we do, right? Your job as an ADC is to find, is to use as much of your time to make as much money as possible. Hitting mid is the best here, and then remember, we pushed mid, used our time to hit mid. So we need another timer. How do we get another timer? We push again, right? You see, you see how this works, guys, right? We get mid, we get mid. Yeah, that gives us time to do something. We need to go and get mid again. Oh, okay. We're going to use this time to help our team because he's losing his mind here. We're going to watch him full and talk about it after. Okay. It looks like I pulled some Houdini shit there, okay? So let's go back and break it down, okay? So... <clears throat> part of this is Kalen mechanics and part of this is not necessarily Kalen or ADC related at all, right? Remember what I said about um, walking up with the intent to not necessarily do damage, but to bait shit, right? The bait that Diana, right? If you don't have damage pattern, you know, why are we walking up? We're going to watch this in action here again, okay? So we know that Kennen has flash and the only way... I mean, if you see this cannon, you, uh, without a doubt in your mind, he's going to flash puddle belt, right? So we need to prepare a response. Whether it be EW combo, which is what I chose, or flash, you need to know half the battle is knowing how they're going to attack and when they're going to attack, right? The other half of the battle is just executing it, executing your response, okay? So it's really simple. We just EW, right? It really is as simple as that. Now, you might ask me, you might be asking, okay, how'd you end up killing him though? I thought, you know, we don't have any, we don't have enough damage. How, how can we just stay there and like try and kill his ass? Well, the secret to this is we are not necessarily trying to kill him. I'm going to put in as much damage as I can before I have to take the lantern. Okay. Like I'm going to try and do as much damage. I don't know if I'm going to kill him, but I'm going to try and get that one last auto off before I take the lantern. Right. Which is exactly what I do. I'm like, okay. And then we out of here. No matter what happened. If I had killed him or if I didn't kill him, I was taking that lantern no matter what, right? That's the important part. You need to cut, you need to cut your losses. We need to cash out. We're done, right? So here you're going to see them like giga chase. I mean, I don't know what they're doing here. They're just giga inting here, right? Um, they're probably upset that we, we like killed their team or something. I, I don't know what's happening here, but yeah, we're just going to try and run. Um, I uh, We did not expect the Diana flash ulti, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, you saw me net the wrong direction. I was trying to do as much damage to Diana as possible. I thought I was dead, but I think it's a reasonable argument to be made that if I net back towards my tower, I think I could survive, right? I think it's very reasonable. But um, yeah, we played as best we could. Probably uh, uh, could have been a lot better. I should have expected Diana flash ulti, but yeah, sometimes it'd be like that, okay? <clears throat> Going to the mid game here. Um, we're trying to make a play on the Viego. I mean, we just watch this. I mean, there's, there's not there's nothing much to say here. He's just dying, right? So we kill a guy. We go we go play we go play play for Baron. We don't actually have to do it. But we just want to beat it. Oh, so close. I thought I play first is probably better. I don't know. He probably thought Kennen's going to the left. Nice try, nice try. Okay, so we should talk about this. Okay, so let's talk about objective ideas. When you start the Baron, you're not necessarily there to just kill it. Okay, we, when we start it, we don't we don't have to just fucking finish it, right? Like let's say they have like a like a fiddle sticks and like an ash and like they're gonna ulti you. Okay, they're gonna try and stop you, right? So you have two choices. We pull the Baron, which is start starting the Baron. Um, so once we pull the Baron, we have two choices. Okay, we can turn. Okay, we need to turn, or we finish. We try and hit it and keep you know see if we can finish it and burst it down. Okay, so the one you need to learn is turn in solo queue because. You need to fucking turn in solo queue. <laughs> all right, you guys are all gonna die of Baron, okay? You need to learn how to turn. That's the most important part. So how do we turn? It's not get off the Baron and just run at them. Because when they see you do that, they just walk away, right? I mean, that's fucking stupid, right? You don't, it doesn't, it literally doesn't work, okay? You need to be able to turn with an ability. So for example, we're going to turn with Ash Arrow. They're gonna walk and try and contest Baron. We'll arrow them in the face and they cannot run away, okay? So you need to find out what your turn, your turn plan is. Because if you just run at them, you're griefing. Okay. So we'll take a look at these champions. Okay. We'll, we'll say, okay, is Kazan have a turn? Not really. Not really decisive. He's fucking. What he's gonna do? R at them. This seems kind of weird, right? How about thrash? Hook. Hook from the pit is a very classic one. Hook from the pixel bush also very classic, right? Listen. No kick. No turn from him. Zach. He's got an E. Okay. And I'm playing Kalen. Traps. So. How can we devise a turn in this case and communicate it to our team? So in this case, I set up a, a trap wall here 
and we're gonna say the instant anyone steps on a trap I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be like yo Zach. I need you to fucking go right, thresh. I need you to fucking hook Okay, we're gonna turn on traps That's the idea and so you're gonna see this idea executed pretty much flawlessly I mean, they're, they're just gonna step on it because they need to check right so the instant they step on it We're just gonna go ready see everyone's ready, right? So we're like spam pinging this trap shit and we're like we gotta turn on this right and even though we did it wasn't quite clean Diana got baited into trying to help, which is exactly what we wanted, right? And, you know, we just, we just fucking trap her, Zanya's, there's, there's nothing really to explain here except that we just, we just, you just play the team fight, right? Do the best you can. Here, we just, I mean, just fucking gale force forward and hit the jinx, right? I mean, there's really nothing to explain here. You guys can, you guys can do all this. I have no doubt in my mind you guys can do all that, okay? Okay, um, we should probably talk about this. Um, <laughs> This is an example where you shouldn't be turning because we can just do the Baron and they can't stop you. Uh, they literally can't stop you, right? If you're, uh, they literally can't stop you if you just hit the Baron, it's just Viego. But we turned anyways. <laughs> what the fuck? It's okay. Um, we got the Ken and TP as well. It's fine. Um, but yeah, that in that case, we shouldn't have turned because even if they try to contest us, they couldn't kill us anyways. They couldn't win anyway. They couldn't win the fight anyways, okay? That was kind of weird. I don't know why we turned there. That was not my call. So, that's okay. Solo queue is not necessarily about the perfect play, but rather the best you guys can just come up with. Just do the best you can. Right. Okay, so we can talk about like mid-game options, but after we push mid, right, and you're really strong as an ADC, you will have the option to look for plays after pushing, right? How do you do damage? Now that we have three items, net EW combo is a lethal combo. Right? So you see me and Thresh just sprinting into their jungle trying to find someone. Right? In this case, it's going to be Diana. I mean, uh, basically, you guys can do this as long as you know that after you push mid, you should make a decision. Do we want to harass them when they try and get the mid wave? Do we want to run in their jungle? Right? Uh, a lot of the times, you run in their jungle when in doubt. Um, or if you have no idea what to do, you can just AFK. Right? That's fine too. Here you can see me getting the uh, the mid wave again, right? You know, you, we should be making money still, right? Just because, just because it's twenty three minutes in the game doesn't mean we should, you know, stop farming, right? After we get the mid wave, we should uh, decide what to do here. We're just gonna go come to fight, right? All this is all this is pretty. I mean, no, you guys can do all this. This is this is nothing special. There's no decision making here. We had a free timer because we pushed mid, right? You see how that works? Oh, the FF. Oh, simple game. So, that was the game. In a nutshell, the biggest areas to look at were uh, either PvP focused uh, or mid-game focused, right? You saw how much of a disaster landing phase was, right? And we navigated our way in the mid-game through our turns, our use of timers, you know, uh, uh, making good use of your time by figuring out which waves you need to fix, and what are you going to do after you clear the waves? And then once you are done doing your thing, you got to go back and clear the waves. So we don't miss any random waves, right? Um, and then the next big thing in the mid game was playing around objectives, right? When we play for the dragon, right? It's just normal team fighting. Just how do we bait the shit out of them, right? We walk up. We're no, we don't walk up with the intent to hit always. We are sometimes when you have no damage, you walk up with the intent to bait out their attacks, Right, bait out their playmaking. And we prepare a mechanical response. So if you have no mechanical response, obviously you can't bait, right? And then around the Baron, right? When we start the Baron, we need to talk, we need to think about turn. Okay, if they show up, are we gonna lose the fight? If we just stick the Baron? Yes, most of the time, you need a turn. So if they cannot win the fight, if you guys stick on Baron, just stick on Baron, no problem, okay? But uh, yeah, when in doubt, we just turn. And you need to turn through specific abilities, okay? So I hope this helped. Didn't really want to make this too long. I will definitely try and cut it in the editor and make this at least, you know, uh, ideally like 10, 15 minutes. But I think in realistically, it's going to be like 20, 25 minutes. But hopefully, you guys learned something. If you wanted me to make more like one-off videos like this, like non-structured, just watch replays and talk about stuff, uh, then we can definitely do that. It's definitely the least effort. Um, but hopefully it's not the least value for you guys. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to support me, check out my stream, twitch.tv slash XF is in Saber. I stream, um, <laughs> I want to say every day, but, uh, haven't been streaming much that often, but I do, I will try and stream on weekdays if I'm feeling good that day. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions slash, um, you have any, uh, suggestions in the comments, definitely 
Let me know. I will read the comment section this time around. Okay. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. Have a good night.